Hey, what's up everyone? Right now we're going to go ahead and talk about discovery sessions and I want to give a few tips on how to run a successful discovery session with your clients and potential clients. My name is Jeffrey. I'm the founder of Lightbox Digital. We're a custom website design and development company. And right now we're going to go over discovery sessions and how these could be done to help you and your business and help you give more value to your clients. What a discovery session is, this is a time that you take with your client in a meeting in order to get to know them better, to get to know who they are, what their goals are, who are their customers and clients, and how you can help them. So let me go ahead and show you how I run my discovery sessions and give you some tips to help you to facilitate and run your own discovery sessions. Now the first one is to be prepared. You want to make sure you take the time out to do your research. You want to go ahead and take the time out to write out your questions. Take the time to learn about the client, check out their social media, check out their website, check out their whole online presence. You want to get as much information about them before you come into the meeting. The next one too is to be able to prepare by setting up and scheduling a meeting. Now these take time. If it's a small client, this could take about an hour. If it's a medium-sized client, it could take a few hours. And then if you get a really big client, these could kind of these could take a couple days. But let's go ahead and focus on the smaller client right now, just for time's sake and just to get used to actually facilitating one of these discovery sessions. Now, first you want to go ahead and explain to your client what you are doing and what the purpose of it is. Before you schedule a call, because you are scheduling a call that's going to take quite a bit of time, let them know why and what to expect from it. You know, I let the I let our clients know uh, what's we're going to go ahead and schedule a discovery session. In this call, we're going to get to know you better. We're going to get to know your goals, what you're trying to accomplish. We're also going to get to know your customers and your clients better as well. And I want to figure out what problems that you have and pain points that you are going through. That way, we can help try to find a solution. So I let them know that before the call, so that way they're prepared as well for that time period. Uh, keep in mind, they might be really busy. And then when we start the, the discovery session, I like to start it off again the same thing. I like to set the atmosphere and the tone, and I like to set expectations from the very beginning. So that way they know this is this is our objective and what they're and what to expect from this, because I'm about to start firing off tons of questions. Now, one key component to doing a discovery session is taking notes. Make sure you got a good notebook ready and you got several pens on hand. You're going to write lots of notes and you want to stay in a state of note taking. What it does is when you're constantly writing notes in the session, you're constantly listening. By writing notes, you're forcing yourself to listen because you're trying to write down everything. I don't know about how you are, but I know me. I always want to go ahead and start talking. I always want to go ahead and start sharing advice and giving solutions right away. But I have to refrain from that in the discovery session because the whole art to it is to be able to ask the right questions and to be able to listen to find the right answers. The answers aren't going to always come directly. They're going to be in between other questions. They're going to come out in different areas. You have to listen. And the best way to do that is to take as many notes as possible. Also, you have all these notes because afterwards we're going to be using these notes when we start to look at writing a, uh, uh, when we start to look at writing a proposal for the project and we start to figure out a solution to give to the client. Now, in my note taking, I have a system that I use and I do three columns. Now, on one column, is all the answers that I get. It's just all my general notes. And when I ask a question, I'm writing my answers in the first column. Uh, when the client says anything that stands out, I'm just writing everything constantly in the first column. My second column are the highlights that I hear from the client. When they say something about themselves that stand out. Uh, for example, we just I was just on a discovery call with a client and he mentioned, you know, he wants his, his business to remain family based. So I put family based in there. And anytime he says anything that or the client says anything that stands out, I put in that second column. And I call that column my branding column. Because at the end of it, we're going to have a list of elements that describes a client, which essentially is their brand. 
Now the third column that I do is the problems column. Anytime a client in the discovery session mentions a problem, any difficulty, any challenge, I list all those problems inside the problem column. And keep this in mind, I'm constantly listening for the problems. I'm trying to learn what the problems are that the client is facing because that's where I'm going to be most effective. So now we've asked all the questions, we wrote all the notes down and the session is over or at least the questioning and, and the discovery part is over. So what I like to do now after we have everything down is I like to recap with the client. I like to review and go through everything with the client. Uh, that column that we have for branding, I like to read it all out to the client. I like to let them know this is these are the highlights that I heard from you when you spoke about yourself and who you are. This is your brand and this is where we should focus on for your positioning. How we need to focus and present you on your website and on all your online channels, your social media, uh, etc. Then we also list out the problems and we go through the problems and let the client know these are the problems that I heard you talk about. These are your pain points. These are the areas we want to focus on finding a solution and fixing. So now we're at the end of the call. Now it's time to talk about the budget and talk about the numbers. Uh, I do not give a quote and I advise not to give a quote at this stage. Do not commit to a number or do not try to figure out a number with a client. What we want to do is we want to fill them out. We want to find out what kind of a budget they have and what we could work with. I first give them a number. I first tell the client that uh, so, you know, usually a project at about this size will start off at about this amount. Then I ask them, are you OK with this kind of a number? Is this in the range that you're looking at? Of course, we could always add more onto it. You know, this is just a starting point. And if this is where you hear back from them, this is where you hear back, like, you know, they'll tell you, yeah, that's OK. That's what we're looking at. But they also might tell you that's a lot more than what we're looking for. You know, it's, that's way out of our budget. And this is a time when you establish that budget. This is when I ask a client, OK, no problem. We could always scale it back a little bit. Uh, what kind of a budget were you looking at working with? You know, what do you have to invest into your project? And then you hear from your client what they have and what they could do. Now you have a good idea of what to work with. And from here, please reframe. Do not give a cost yet. Save this for your proposal that will come after. Because before you give a number, you really want to take a look at what they need and what you're offering to do for them. That takes a little bit of time. And don't only just refrain from giving them a quote on the call, also refrain from giving them the full solution. You know, this is what I like to do with a client. I don't like to tell them we could do this, do this and do this in the discovery call because I want to take time and I really want to see what I can do to help them. I really want to take time to do a little bit more research. So I tell the client, I'm like, Look, this has been a great call. We got a lot of great information. I feel like we really got a chance to know each other. I got a chance to know you, your customers, and you know problems that we need to fix and solve for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take time. I'm going to review all of our notes. I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more research and put together a proposal for you. And now we're ready for the next stage. And the next stage is going to be writing a proposal for the client. Now we have pages full of notes. We know what the client is looking for. We know what they need now. We know what kind of a solution we could give to the client and how we could actually help the client. And we know their budget. So we have all we needed now to go ahead and give a proposal to the client and start the project. So I hope this helps. It took me quite a bit of time and practice to learn how to facilitate one of these effectively. Actually, I didn't learn how to do one of these in my first couple years. My experience was I just listened to the client. The client told me this is what they wanted and I went ahead and did it. By actually taking time to do this discovery and find out the real problems the client has, you know, and keep this in mind, you can only prescribe a solution once you diagnose the problem. You have to find out the problem first before you could give the actual solution to it. And by doing that, you're able to do something that is more effective for the client. There's something about when you take on a job for a client and you do the work and that it produces results and you see it helping the client's business. And that's what we're in the business of.
We're in the business of helping other businesses. Well, I hope this helps out a lot. If you like this and this found to be useful, uh, this is a new channel. It'll really help if you go ahead and subscribe, like it, comment on it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, if you would like to hear about something else. This is new channel again. Uh, expect this video quality to be getting a whole lot better coming up soon. I'm about to go ahead and get a new camera and do all the cool YouTube stuff. Uh, well, that's it for today. Thank you very much.